I'm gonna show you some basic tips and tricks for SwiftUI previews. Things like, you know, basic keyboard shortcuts, showing multiple previews at the same time with various different attributes, you know, accessibility sizes, all that stuff. I'm gonna show you how to pin two different views previews together so you can kind of work on two views at the same time, that kind of stuff. I'm using the base project of dubdubgrub. It's my latest course, SwiftUI, CloudKit, MapKit. Check it out if you want, seanallen.teachable.com. But we're using this as the base project. Feel free to open up whatever project you want uh, if you wanna follow along. We'll start off with the basic shortcuts. To show and hide the preview, you do command option enter, it hides it, command option enter to show it. And you'll know as you're bouncing around through your project, oftentimes you gotta show and hide the preview. So again, command option enter, command option enter to show and hide it. Now, another thing you'll run into with previews all the time is that damn resume button, right? So here's the example, right? Let me click on onboard view. I think this will trigger it. No, it doesn't. Let me go back to uh, location detail view. Let me try like a brand new view, profile modal view. Okay, wow, previews are actually behaving right now. All right, I actually had to shut that next code and reopen it to trigger this resume button, right? It's hard to trigger on command, but if you've been working in SwiftUI, you'll see this resume button here on your preview all the time. So it's nice to have a keyboard shortcut for that, and that is command option P. That'll resume the preview. And we got our preview back up and running. It's hard for me to repeat that, because again, it's hard to trigger that resume button. We'll try going back to onboard view. Uh, no, previews are gonna be behaving. Okay, anyway, back to location detail view. Again, command option P to resume your preview. New in iOS 15, we can check out our previews in landscape, and that's this rotation button up here. Now, dubdubgrub was not built for landscape, as you can see, I'll make this bigger here, right? Not built for it. Um, I won't go on my full rant, but uh, only use landscape if it actually, you know, is a good use case for your product. Don't put landscape in just to put landscape in. Reason being, it's a lot of developer overhead to adapt your UI to work well on landscape. It's a ton of work. And, uh, you know, unless your app really needs it, I don't recommend doing it. You know, Instagram doesn't support landscape. Twitter doesn't support landscape. I'll only do it if your app needs it because it's a lot of work. Also new in Xcode 13 is we get uh, accessibility added to our inspector. So I'm gonna pull this out here, this inspector tab uh, right here, or attributes inspector, I should say. You'll see now we have this accessibility section right here. So let me click on uh, one of our elements. We'll do our description view, which is this block of text right here. This is our local San Jose uh, South Market. And you see the accessibility, right? Well, we're just inheriting it, but this is a great way to, if you click this circle right here, you can see a list, uh, the WWDC video said curated list. So I assume they're, you know, taking out the stuff that's most common of all the typical stuff that you want to do for accessibility. And you can see when I clicked on label over in our code on the description view, it added the accessibility label modifier. Now, of course, you change that string to whatever you want voiceover to say. You don't want voiceover to say label. So you make sure you change that string. But the reason I like this is it gives you a nice big picture of like, Am I handling accessibility for this UI element? And again, the UI element we're focused on is our description view. And by clicking these, right, say you want an accessibility hint, you click that. Now you see in the code, it gives us the modifier. Maybe you want this to be uh, hidden for the voiceover. You don't want voiceover to read this section, right? So you can do that. And again, you can see on the right, the code is, is updating. Maybe you wanna give this a trait of a header, right? And all this stuff, you may not be familiar with what accessibility is, you know, I'm not gonna go down that rabbit hole in this tutorial. This accessibility inspector is a great overview of your UI elements to see like what you have available, you know, what you've done, what you haven't done, how you can improve your accessibility. And it's great and a nice little compact piece of information to help you review each element, right? So we were on our description view. And again, if I click on my banner image view, you see now we get back to just having our label. And we do handle accessibility in the dubdubgrub course. So if I go down to my banner image view, you can see we already have accessibility hidden uh, is true because we don't want voiceover reading out like our image name, like the image is, is irrelevant in this case. But again, as you click on your elements, you get this nice accessibility inspector that really gives you an overview of how you're doing on accessibility. Okay, let's minimize the right pane. Let's go back up to uh, the top here. I'm gonna get rid of uh, this stuff because we don't need that. Do command B to make sure we're good to go. Now let's talk about, oh, yeah, we got the resume, command option P, resume the preview, there you go. I'm gonna take every chance I get to, <laughs> to showcase that. Anyway, uh, let's show multiple previews. And okay, so let's start here. Uh, I'm gonna click this plus button in the upper right and that duplicates the preview. So you see here, we have two of them. I'm gonna make this smaller just for the sake of like showing you these layouts. Obviously you can't see what's on the screen, but that's fine. Uh, so now if I go down to where my preview is defined here, you can see that it has added a group 
and then it has added a duplicate of my preview. Okay, we can get rid of this preview uh, orientation as portrait because we're not messing with preview orientation. So that's just extra code. But again, anything you do in the preview, your code's automatically gonna update. So now what we can do is, you know, I'm gonna add, you know, two more. I will just add one more. <laughs> two more. Uh, this example could get crazy. So let's say this first one, we wanna test uh, and I'll, now that you see like how the previews are laid out, I'll zoom back in so we can see them a little better. But let's say on this one, I wanna test uh, some different attributes. So you click this button here and you can see we can change the, the device. We'll, we'll do that on a different one. I want this to be dark mode. And then here's the real power here, right? We can go to dynamic uh, type here, inherited right now, but let's test accessibility extra, 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 extra large, right? This is the crazy big font. You can test that, you know, per, uh, preview. So now you see here, holy crap, it looks like we got some work to do to handle this, but in the course we actually do handle adapting your UI for dynamic type. So to showcase that on this first preview here, and I'm actually going to separate these previews just visually so you can see which one we're on, but you see we got preferred color scheme, dark environment, accessibility, extra, extra large, right? So again, it updates the code, but on this navigation view, I'm going to embed this in a scroll view and in the course, in the code, we do this dynamically. We reach up into the environment, see what size category they chose, right? See, this is based on environment size category. And if they chose accessibility, extra, extra large, we embed it in a scroll view. So I'm kind of doing it manually for this preview, um, just to show you. Uh, cause you'll see why, right? And when you're adapting your UI for this large text, you're pretty much always gonna need scroll views cause as you see the text is so large. So when I run the preview, you'll see the behavior, right? So now it turns into a scroll view. And then instead of our grid of users down here being three across, it's one across, right? And we adapted that dynamically based on the dynamic type, right? So if I stop this preview and run this preview here, you'll see what that UI looks like. Um, right, this is the normal UI, right? We're just, this is scrollable. But again, to handle this huge dynamic type, and it's a great way to see this on the preview, you know, we had to ad adapt the UI a, a bit. Again, we go over all that uh, in the course. But the, the point here is, look, I can create my previews with various different attributes so I can see very quickly, you know, the different states my app can be in. For example, let's, you know, let's try even a different device, right? So the device, instead of being the iPhone 12 Pro, let's do the iPhone 8. Uh, we'll keep it light mode and we'll do dynamic type, uh, we'll do extra large dynamic type, right? So you can see all the different, you know, permutations of your, what your app can be in, and you can test that in your previews. So now you see here we're dynamic type large and we're on the iPhone 8. So again, you can set up these multiple previews, all kinds of different variations to see your app in action and be able to quickly find out like, oh crap, I'm not handling super extra, extra large dynamic type on the iPhone SE. I need to fix that, right? So this is a great way to do that. Before I move on, I do wanna reiterate, right? We were making all those changes on our preview, but look at our code. Like here's our first pre uh, preview, right? We got that. Here's our second preview. You can see it's an iPhone 8, size category extra large, and we didn't do anything with the last one. But again, the code is automatically updating as you change your preview. So if you do this a lot and you do get really good and you do memorize this code, you can easily just type the code and not even mess with like, you know, the preview menus, but preview menus are pretty uh, easy. So I'm actually going to do a bunch of uh, command Z's to go back to where we were because we are done with the multiple preview section. Holy crap, that was way too far. Uh, this should be good. Um, okay, preview back to normal. I'll make it bigger. So now let's talk about pinning multiple views previews so you can work on two screens at the same time. That sounds confusing. Let me show you it in action. So for that, we're going to go to our custom views here. We're going to go to our map balloon. Uh, we'll let the preview uh, load so you know what we're working with here. Uh, Resume, command option P. There we go, there's our map balloon shape. You can see how we're drawing that shape uh, that we used to build our custom map annotation in dub dub grub. That's this DDG annotation here, this view that you're gonna see. There you go, it's a little small because you know that I wanted a, a realistic size, so I will blow it up uh, so you can see that. But now let's say I wanted to change the, the shape of my map balloon. So what I would do is I would pin this view, right? So that view is pinned. I'm gonna make it smaller. And now I'll go back to my map balloon. Now that this is pinned, you'll see that preview remains. And now I get my map balloon preview as well. So let's say I wanted to change the shape of my map balloon, but as I change the shape of my map balloon, I wanna see what my actual annotation looks like. So here's the path that I'm drawing the map balloon on. Uh, I'll just pick something real quick. Let's make our control point uh, mid X here on the right side. 
uh, and you'll see what it does here. So see, it, it cuts it off, basically changes our shape, but you can see it's updating our map annotation view uh, in real time as well. And you know we have the preview pinned so we can see what happens in real time as we you know play around with our shape. And this is great for any views that are like components of another much larger view, right? So our, our map balloon shape is a component of our map pin annotation. So again, you can pin that. So as you make changes, uh, you can see it react in real time. So those are some basic tips and tricks for the Swift UI preview. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.